hi uh, so we will continue the presentation now the next category of cell called granulocytes as the name indicates these are the cells with the granules in their cytoplasm that's the why they are called as granulocytes these are otherwise also called as polymorphonuclear granulocytes or pmns right and uh, these cells there are there is a number of cells under this category including the neutrophils basophils eosinophils mast cells etc so all are performing diverse functions right and uh, most of them are very significant also uh, all those cells are derived from their corresponding progenitors under the myeloid lineage within the bone marrow and uh, they are released into the circulation and they survive for different uh, varying days in the circulation and uh, usually they constitute about uh, 65 to 75 percentage of the wb that means these are the major cells of the wbcs in the peripheral blood right and uh, as already stated their cytoplasm is rich with the granules and these granules are filled with chemicals and these chemicals are responsible for their corresponding activity and uh, usually not only the uh, functional activity they also help in the identification uh, as they are colored differentially on staining and we have three major categories as neutrophils eosinophils and basophils based on their morphological features and cytoplasmic staining characteristics in addition to their functional differences now we are uh, will discuss neutrophils for the first uh, as the first cell 90 percentage of the circulating granulocytes are neutrophil that means out of the 75 percentage 90 percentage of the granulocytes are neutrophils right these are the major cells seen in peripheral blood and uh, they are derived from the corresponding progenitor uh, and all those things are very common to all other cells then they release into the blood they they survive for some some hours just like uh, that of monocyte then they migrate into tissues and usually uh, within the tissues they will not survive for long period but for a few days then uh, normally they are associated with uh, uh, you know phagocytosis and definitely that leads to inflammation so they are usually migrated to sites of inflammation then the condition in which uh, uh, there is an increase in the number of circulating neutrophils in response to an infection is called a leukocytosis in general or neutro cytosis in specific and this is a very good tool for diagnostic purpose for recognizing a recent infection then uh, we know uh, in response to a chemotactic factors or a, there is an injury or there is a, a, an external assault there, there is a damage to skin or somewhere then the circulating neutrophils will migrate through certain mechanisms and that mechanism is collectively called as extravasation which include uh, uh, diapetism and all other various responses are there. So, by extravasation these neutrophils will migrate into the site of injury and where they result in inflammation right. Then uh, these are the principal phagocytic cell this is the very important point you have to remember ok. Then the uh, granules are usually acerophilic in nature that means they contain very toxic chemicals including the hydrolase myeloperoxidase lysozymes etc all those are toxic to the targets right normally they fused with the with the targeted cells uh, that leads to the formation of phagolysosome etc if we know that when we discuss in the phagocytosis and the very co common receptors found on the neutrophils are cd13 15 16 cd89 etc these are the uh, commonly found receptors on neutrophils this is the representation of the image of neutrophils you can see this is having a multi lobed shape and this will help in their identification see this is the microscopic image after staining you can see a multi lobed nucleus over there also right this will help in the identification so that is about neutrophils. Now the uh, conditions in which uh, there is an increase or decrease in the neutrophil counts. Uh, this is uh, helping in the diagnosis of various infections right the condition in which there is an increase in the uh, in the site neutrophil is called a neutrophilia right and there are various conditions which helps in uh, or which which results in neutrophilia they are probably this is a, a bacterial infection that is the most uh, significant uh, uh, helpful uh, fact about this neutrophilia right in the other situations like uh, the listed ones like non infectious inflammation injury surgery heart attacks um, leukemias exercise 
uh, then stress level, steroid use, etc. All those things like uh, also smoking cigarettes, uh, all those things will uh, also may result in neutrophilia, right. Then the opposite condition called the neutropenia, uh, in which there is a concentration which is less than the normal, right. And conditions like usage of drugs, uh, suppressed immune system, bone marrow failure, infections like hepatitis, then autoimmune disorders, etc., may result in neutropenia. Okay, so that's about this uh, neutrophilia and neutropenia. Okay, now the second uh, granulocyte is called eosinophils. These are uh, very, these are very very small in quantity when compared to the neutrophils only 2 to 5 percentage of the total WBC. Then they are derived from their corresponding progenitor. They are, they are, they are phagocytic, but not uh, usually performing this phagocytosis. They, it is not their major function, right. Then they have granules, this, they, they specifically have larger granules and sometimes they are considered as a membrane bound organelle. And they perform kind of phagocytosis to eliminate parasitic uh, uh, phag parasitic uh, pathogens right so uh, occasionally they also release the chemicals in the granules over this parasite for their destruction and this is the representation this is having uh, a bilobed nucleus and they usually get uh, stained and uh, there will be a pink coloration on staining with hematocylin or eosin that's why they are named as eosinophils they stained with eosin Okay. And the conditions like eosinophilia is there when the concentration is uh, beyond 1500 cells per microliter, right. This condition is called hyper eosinophilic syndrome. Then this condition occurs during allergy condition or medication inflammation, dermatitis, some cancerous parasitic infection. All these are the situations where there will be an eosinophilia. Then uh, eosinopenia is uh, uh, usually not that dangerous when the con number of eosinophils are less which is not a medically uh, uh, complicated situation because even it is zero it is uh, not a problem at all for the body. Then basophils the third category they also represent very less total 1 percentage of the blood cell bl uh, cells in the peripheral blood and 3 percentage of WBC. Then uh, normal value is from 0 to 300 basophil per microliter of that means these are very small quantity of basophil and moreover if the number of basophil increases in the peripheral blood that indicates uh, allergic condition of the host body right. They are originated from the corresponding progenitor for basophils in the bone marrow and is recruited to the tissues uh, of, of various locations in the body. Then they are non phagocytic granular that means the other two granulocytes were phagocytic you know. Uh, Neutrophils are the principal phagocytic cells. Eosinophils are capable of phagocytosis even though they are not uh, professional phagocyte. But here this one basophil is not a phagocytic granulocyte, right. But instead they have other mechanisms like they have the granules and these granules contain pharmacologically active substances like histamine and other chemicals. So, this results in the re development of allergic responses. And moreover, they also help in their identification as they are stained darker. And they are as already stated mediators of allergic reactions. And how this allergy is mediated is they have an FC, they have a receptor for the FC portion of IgE antibodies. And IgE antibodies are significant for allergic development, right. So, this IgE antibodies will bound over the FC portion, sorry, sorry, bound over the receptor for the FC portion of this IgE. So, they form a complex and this uh, allergy causing agents we call them as allergen will interact with the, this IgE antibodies and cross linking of this will result in degranulation. Okay. So, the granules will undergo degranulation on cross linking of these receptors by an allergen that means allergy causing agent. Then basophil will release histamine like allergic mediators during this allergic reaction that will cause complications. So, this image will give you an idea about that. Here this is the uh, uh, cell basophil, there is an FC receptor specific for IgE, right. So, this is the IgE and this is the allergen. So, this allergen will interact with both these IgE antibodies. So, this leads to the 
degranulation the chemicals are released out of the cell and this is the representation this is uh, usually uh, somewhat bilobed or irregular or some sometimes it is occasionally having a bean shaped nucleus right and stained with basic dyes that is why they have the name basophils. Okay. Now, another category of granulocyte called mast cells. Mast cells are almost similar to basophils. Uh, they are derived from, uh, from, the, from the corresponding progenitor in the bone marrow and released into the circulation usually in the undifferentiated stage. Right. And the differentiation and development occurs in the, in the tissues right, after migration, usually found in skin tissues, organs, epithelial cells, uh, genitourinary and di other digestive systems etcetera. There are two categories mucosal mast cells and connective tissue mast cells right and they also have cytoplasmic granules similar to that of basophils and also the chemical substances like histamine and other pharmacologically active substances uh, also stained by basic dyes. That means, they have similarity uh, uh, to that of basophils. Uh, they also induce uh, allergic responses just like uh, as what uh, basophils do. There is FC portion receptor for IgE and cross linking leads to the degranulation and uh, uh, allergic responses. Okay. So, the same image is given here also the same mechanism. Right. So, by that we wind up uh, this part of presentation. So, here you can see yeah, these other references usually you can go for QB immunology textbook and also the textbook by clinical immunology by Robert R. Rich and also Royd's essential immunology and these are some, some net references. See, so, uh, so this is about the cells of immune system. So, we, uh, we wind up here. So, I will brief once again, we started with hematopoiesis, then we listed all the cells, then uh, started discussion with the lymphocytes in which we had uh, B cells, T cells and uh, neutro, uh, NK sorry NK cells. Then we continue the discussion with uh, dendritic cells, right dendritic cells are there, then uh, macrophages are there, then granulocytes are there. Of the within the granulocytes, we have seen neutrophils, basophils, and eosinophils, and also finally the mast cells. So you have to remember about their structural features, functional features, and uh, certain certain important reactions like antibody production, B cell activation, then T cell mechanism, uh, recognition of antigens by these cells. All those things are the uh, uh, highlighted points in this part of presentations. Okay. So, hope you can follow this presentation and thank you for listening and watching. Thank you.